guys, Rivenhead here. Welcome back to another episode of Power Wash Simulator. Hope you're enjoying yourselves today. I do want to apologize if you were here for a vlog. I know that the, the ten of you that watch them <laughs> may not be devastated. Uh, my intention was to have a vlog going today. Uh, but um, life steps in and gets in the way and no vlog. Um, as I've mentioned, I am in the process of going on vacation and moving. There's a lot of things in the air, and so I just haven't had the time to go out and do a vlog. I tried the other day. Um, unfortunately, uh, my, my, my drive and inspiration to vlog got squashed because of, uh, you know, an incidents and things, but it's okay. Um, it's, or it's fine. Um, just to open up real quick, uh, I went out on Saturday to vlog, uh, like I normally do, put the, uh, the gear all together and get out for a little bit of a bike ride and then get to a certain area and then I usually start to film and I think and mull it over my head as to what is going to inspire me. And th this was going to be an easy one because I was already excited about the move and excited about the trip. And so I had a lot of things kind of lined up in my head about, you know, going, yee, life is, life is going to be fun. Um, and just being excited. Uh, unfortunately, um, I wasn't too far uh, from my home and I ran across a bunch of uh, emergency lights. Uh, emergency vehicles were out. Um, a accident had happened. Uh, somebody was injured, uh, their vehicle was in distress, they were in distress, and, um, you know, that in itself would have deterred me and probably taken out a bit of my zeal for it, but, uh, unfortunately, um, it, there were just a bunch of people that were there, and instead of, uh, well, it, the perception was that they were not projecting a positive vibe uh, there's a lot of people that had their cameras or their phones out taking selfies in front of the vehicle. Uh, the paramedics were working on a person. There was a bunch of people just standing around with their cameras out and filming this person being worked on by paramedics. And it was just, it was shocking to me and I wasn't comfortable with any of it. Um, and because of the fact that it was a very negative situation happening, I didn't want to project anything of myself into it. Uh, not my place, you know, this person that was in trouble, uh, they needed as much positive energy as they could and not to be uh, drained by a bunch of sycophantic uh, energy vampires that are trying to, I, I have no idea, be famous online by taking awful situations and making a video of it. I have no, no fucking clue. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it devastated me personally. Um, I left... Uh, all my ambition and drive to record anything was gone. So it was like, you know what? It, it's fine. Um, and it's been a few days since that's happened. Um, and um, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm sad that it happened, obviously. Um, I, I don't like uh, the fact that, you know, people were being so self-serving uh, in a time when somebody else really could have been in need. Um but that callousness, that lack of humanity, just reaffirmed for me why I'm moving. Um, you know, this city is not what it used to be for me. Um, I'm not the same person I was when I moved here years ago. Um, my things that I need out of my life uh, are not going to be... They're not here. Like, anything that I need to ex exist is not here. Uh, I need to get back to nature. I need to get away from people. Um, I need to find a comfortable zone where I could take a walk. If I want to take my mask off and not feel scared that I'm going to be inundated by a dozen people, you know. I would like to be able to take a walk in nature, go out into the woods and spend an afternoon wandering and not see another soul. Or maybe see two or three, you know. But the hundreds that I see every day and it just, I, I'm, as I've mentioned, like this is my demon, my thing that I'm coping with. I'm dealing with it. Uh, but it, what I need to heal and get better is not to be surrounded by the people that are here, you know, this, uh, negative energy that I'm, I perceive. And 
again, I'm projecting myself onto their negative energy. I have no idea the mindset of the people that were there taking the, you know, the, the pictures. You know, who knows? I have no idea what they were going through in their day. All I can tell you is what I was going through in mine and that I went from being in a very good mood to a very sad mood uh, in a matter of moments. So um, I, I walked away from the event. Um, I tried to project as much positive energy towards the person that was in harm. Uh, I wish them well. Uh, you know, as people say, you know, the thoughts and prayers. You do that kind of thing. You, you try to, you know, put forth as much positive into the world as you can. Um, but it hurt. It hurt me a lot to watch this n this callousness of people. Um, and it saddened me for myself. It saddened me for the people that uh, were hurt. The person that was hurt. Uh, again, I have no idea. The, I, I, I wasn't there to gawk. I, I saw the vehicle. saw paramedics the person on the ground like glancingly um and then i st stared at the people for you know all of 30 seconds like it, it literally as soon as i got there into when i turned around and left it was maybe 30 seconds like i didn't pre i did not stay very long um but it hurt it hurt me a lot but uh reaffirm my decision so i'm happy to be gone uh this is a busy week for me um so i've been packing getting everything ready Almost done with the, the, the move packing. I got a couple of things that I need to do quickly. Um, the movers are coming in on Friday. Uh, I'm working Friday, <laughs> so that's going to be weird. I work from a laptop with a headset, so it's not like it's the end of the world. Um, and there was a little bit of furniture in this apartment when I first got here. So I got an old couch that was here. It's a nice couch. I've slept on it before, so I'm going to sleep on it Friday night. Uh, got to get to the new place for Saturday, uh, leave for New Brunswick on Monday or Tuesday. I got to double check my, my itinerary. I think it's Monday. Um, and then I'll be gone for about 10 days and then back and, you know, unpack and do my thing and, uh, start anew. Uh, so coming weeks and days. I'm um, going to probably, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not going to make any guarantees what's happening. I plan on recording some stuff when I'm in New Brunswick, um, hopefully doing some vlog stuff. I'm going to have my laptop with me. Um, it's not, you know, a beast machine or anything. This is like a couple hundred dollar laptop that I bought a few years ago, <laughs> or last year. Um, it's like a six core processor, 12 threads. It's a Ryzen, you know, I think it's a 4600 or something like that. I don't remember what it is. Um, it's a great little machine, does what I need. Um, it's got Vega graphics on it. So, uh, I should be able to render and do stuff with it. Um, it's not going to be speedy, um, and that's okay. So I might do some vlog stuff with it. No idea. Um, if I do any re renders from it, I won't be rendering in 4K. I will probably be doing that in 1080p. Which is again fine, um, you know. I do it with this machine because I can. It's not necessary, um, so we'll see. Uh, so if you don't get another vlog next week, it's because I'm busy and uh, I don't have anything ready, <laughs> and I couldn't get it ready. Um, and I may not have another video, and it's in, you know to replace it, which is fine. Um, I can go for a day without videos, and you, uh, if you're curious, yeah. Uh, I have, um, Fetch and I did some Deep Rock Galactic over the weekend, um, and part of last week. Uh, he's been so kind to help out and get some extra content for me so that I can, uh, take some time off. Um, so I have, right to the, to this day, I have, um, my weekly video scheduled through to the end of November. Yep. Um, I have Deep Rock Galactic scheduled until... The first week, or the last week of October, and I have um, this. So, I have six days a week until November scheduled and already done. So, I'm okay. There will be content coming out. If I decide to take a month off, we're good. <laughs> if I only decide to do one video uh, oh, every two weeks for vlogging or whatever, we're good. Um, you know, if I decide to record some me playing one of these games from my laptop doing the streaming on the Xbox Game Pass, 
we're good. Um, you know, kind of allow me to do a few things that I want to do that, you know, whatever. Um, like I said, my intention over the coming weeks is to step away from the tech. Um, I need to ground myself, get back to nature. Um, we're coming up on my favorite time of the year, which is fall. Fall and spring are my, ooh, they're my jam. Uh, I dig the cooler weather, the shorter days. I am that asshole who digs winter. Um, I don't really care much for heat. But I tell you what I do love. I love the woods. I love uh, connecting back with nature, standing next to Brooks, reading. I got my books ready for sitting next to uh, some some of the paths and trails and just sitting and just getting into a book for a while. Oh my god. I, I cannot express to you how important a book is to me. Um, but it, it, it it's up there. Like it's up there uh, with like air to breathe is like the importance for me. <laughs> how I feel about books. Um, they were my comfort as a child growing up. Um, when you're weird and you're odd and you really don't fit in a lot of times and you move a lot. Uh, sounds like it's my continuation of my life, but yeah. Uh, I've been like this my entire fucking life. Um, I've moved constantly. I have um, been an introvert and, and happy in my own skin. But yeah, sitting out in nature with a book is one of my favorite things to do. God, like, um, one of my favorite memories is uh, I was high school? Yeah, I would have been great. 10 I think 9 or 10 um, not that old um, we had just moved to Florida and um, my thing was big books um, if I had to go to the to the store and buy a book I didn't really care so much as what the story was about uh, it had to be science fiction fantasy was my wheelhouse so every book I looked at was in that vein uh, but the requirement for me was not um, about the story. It was how big the book was. The bigger the book, the better the deal. The more pages I could read. I was going to read it from cover to cover, regardless of what I bought. Um, and I, I, I have had really good luck with books. Like, I could find these amazing stories that uh, from our authors that I've n I never would have heard about um, and I did it just because of the fact that I was you know I like the uh, the thickness of that book I I'm, I like thick books I cannot lie um, but yeah one of them was that I picked up uh, was Stephen King's The Stand um, I had never uh, read a Stephen King story I had been into horror um, but most of the time it was just like serial horror stuff. It was lightweight. Um, really hadn't gotten cerebral with it, uh, which is really weird because you know I was into cerebral fantasies and things, but horror for whatever reason I was just into just schlock garbage horror. Um, again, this is the seventies, so you know we had a lot of choices for uh, <laughs> for horror. Uh, and I like I said. It's, this would be 84, 82, 83. Yeah, 83? Probably. Um, but yeah, anyway, Stephen King's The Stand. Found it in the library. Big, huge fucking book. And I'm like, okay. No idea what this is going to be like. Um, picked it up. Got home. Started to read it. And um, I don't sleep a whole lot. And I was just reading I just was reading, not thinking about anything other than the book. And then the next thing I know, my mom's knocking on my door, uh, asking me to come in for breakfast. I'd read the entire night, and I had devoured about a third of the book in, in one evening sitting. And I hadn't had a book grab me like that before. Um, you know, I had been enamored by books where I would want to read them, but to sit there and get completely lost in a tale as much as that one did, got me. Um, and then for the course of the next couple of days, um, I would go sit out by the beach or sit out by the canal 
because uh, in Florida you didn't. <laughs> there's no woods, uh, not where I was. Uh, that was I was living in Fort Lauderdale at the time. Um, but yeah, taking the book to the beach was definitely a thing, and sitting under an umbrella reading Stephen King's The Stand, uh, Captain Trips, and the whole shooting match was so good. Um, and that reaffirmed to me that big books were a thing. And th th the other one after that was like Robert Emmer Cammon's The Swan Song was another one that I ended up getting into. Uh, I got into these dystopian end of the world books for a bit there, and they were great. Um, still, like to this day, uh, The Stand is one of my favorite novels that I've ever read. Uh, and Swan Song, I will put that up there too. Um, that was different, a different take. Um, uh, the next one that got me was years later. Um, not, not quite a decade, but close. Um, and this one was hard to find. Uh, I'd heard about it, but um, in Canada, because it was a British author, it was not as easy to find them. Um, and it was by Brian Loomley, and it was the Necroscope series. It was a vampire series of books. But a different take on it. Uh, like It had like this the whole thing was speaking to the dead and pa it, it was a really cool supernatural story but it incorporated a bunch of stuff that was way out there like way different than any other vampire story or any other horror thing like they incorporated in math in weird ways and amazing ways Brian Loomley did um, like folding space and dealing with like basically quantum theory and yeah it was it was interesting and I read that whole series um, I got lucky that where I was staying there was a person had been uh, in um, I was in Canada at the time had been there on vacation and they had brought the series of books I guess these are all UK books um, and it was the entire series and it, the same person's name was written in each each book, and I bought them all from a used secondhand store, and I that was it. The next one was that series, uh, the Necroscope series, and um, yeah, uh, that's another one that I'm I tempted to put that on my uh, e-reader for the trip. I've got uh, digital copies of it, uh, found them, bought them, and I'm like, oh, I haven't read them again. It's been a while. Um, th the series changed a bit um, later on, uh, and it was still good. I think it was his son wrote it after a period of time. I'm not too sure. I can't remember the ins and outs of everything with it. There were a couple of series at that time that I was kind of stuck on. Like um, I love Dune, the original series by Frank Herbert. Phenomenal. Great series of books. Um, Thankfully, the newest movie does justice. I enjoyed the David Lynch version. I'm that person, yes. I did enjoy Sting in it. I, Kyle McLaughlin was fine. <laughs> As would um, But, uh, yeah. Uh, Dune series, like, uh, Frank Herbert's version was written and done, and by the time I got into it in, again, early 90s, um, I, it's another one, bought all... Is it five or six books in the series at that time? Read the entire thing back to back, like book after book after book after book after book, and no regrets. Loved every minute of it. Um, but um, Frank Herbert's son, I do believe, continued on uh, with the the House Harkonnen and the House of Trades, and it was a different series, and it kind of went back to the original book a bit. Uh, I think the original two books, to be honest. Um, a different take on it, but it was like you could you could feel that there was some love for the canon that was involved in it, and I enjoyed it. Um, even though it wasn't written by the original author, I still, you know, it, it did me. You know what? I'm I'm that person. It's like you know what? If you can continue the story and still make it engaging and fun, um, I don't care. If you're the original author or not, I'm I'm more than happy to read your book. <laughs> you know, if you put me back into that world, I'm ecstatic. Same with video games. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, you know, Kojima doesn't have to be the one that makes the game. That you know, if it's a Kojima game and Kojima's not making the sequel, but it's still a good game, I'm still on board. 
I'm not going to say no because he's not on board with it. Not that person. Um, I don't care. A good game's a good game. A good story is a good story. A good movie is a good movie. Um, but also, bad movie is great. <laughs> I love bad movies. I am so, so happy uh, that I have Prime. Um, Amazon Prime probably is the best thing for people that like B-movies. Like, I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to do on the weekends was to put on TV and you'd find those weekend movies that it's just, it's shit. Or you would go to the, 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 the rental store and, you know, every rental, a DVD rental place had the, that sale. Like, you know, get three or four movies for the weekend for five bucks and, but they were tiered, like, you know, you had your A movies or your B movies or your, you know, the crap. And, like, there was always the discount bin. You know, you get a movie for a buck. It's like, can I rent a movie for $2.50 or just buy a shitty movie for a dollar? And I was always buying the shitty movies. Like, I, I'm a fan of B horror movies, B science movies, B movies in general. Um, I Not necessarily dramas. Uh, th th that shit, the, the fucking, uh, God, I don't know, those Christmas movies put out by, uh, Hallmark or whatever it was, or I don't know who does them, but uh, the, these family movies, those can rot in hell for me, uh, they're, they're, I'm, I am not their target audience, but you can put, um, a bunch of those B-8 movies on and I'm fucking sold. Uh, Full Moon Videos, I think was one, they had the Puppet Master series and, Tim Somerson had the series or he was like a time cop or he was miniaturized or something. Fucking crazy shit. And I just loved that shit. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a weirdo. What can I say? I like weird shit. And, ooh, did we do it? I think we're good. I'm, I, I'm going to end things here in a minute. I'm feeling better. I needed this. I needed to just play and goof. I haven't played this game for a bit. Um, I completed the main bit, um, much to my chagrin. Okay, floor is done. Fourth floor, yeah. But yeah, I here, we'll, we'll get out. I will go back to career mode. But I completed everything. Um, not going to lie, this thing sucked. Um, I spent a good part of two or three hours doing this thing. Um, and I'll do it again. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for putting up with my shit, my rambles. Um, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back again next week. Fingers crossed. If you don't see me for a few weeks, don't for regret. Don't, don't, don't regret. Yeah, or regret that you came into my channel. Uh, don't fret. I will be back um, as soon as I'm back up and running again and settled. I'll be back. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. This is a song for all the real